Recently, I've been on a bit of a Green Lantern binge. I've been reading highly recommended comics such as the Jeff Johns Green Lantern run, Green Lantern Earth One, and I've also been watching the Green Lantern animated series on HBO Max. Against my better judgment, I decided, you know what, let's watch the Green Lantern movie. It can't possibly be as bad as everyone said it was, can it? Spoiler alert, it was still just as bad as everyone said it was. Green Lantern is one of those movies that's so bad that it's almost hard to find something good within the movie. It doesn't necessarily do anything well or even good enough. It's literally just an hour and 50 minutes of nothing but terrible decisions. To add to that, it doesn't help Green Lantern's case when you realize that this movie came out the same year as Captain America The First Avenger, which is a movie pretty much any comic book fan loves. And then there's the first Thor movie which is just alright. Green Lantern as a whole was super frustrating to sit through, and honestly, I think it's time we rip it to shreds for its upcoming 10 year anniversary, cause why not? Green Lantern might be one of the worst superhero movies ever made. There's only really one good thing about Green Lantern, and that's Sinestro. Literally any time that Sinestro was on screen during this movie, you can tell that this man was giving it his all. It's almost like when you're in a group project and you're the one who's doing all of the work while everyone else isn't doing a damn thing. Yeah, that's Sinestro throughout this movie. In a scene where Sinestro's giving a speech to the entirety of the Green Lantern Corps, you can literally feel how strong his presence is within that scene. And this is despite the fact that 95% of those Green Lantern members are CGI. That's how much effort the actor put into this movie despite it being absolutely awful. Even when Sinestro is fighting Hal after Kilowog trains him, you feel the actual emotions of Sinestro. Sinestro tells Hal that he insults Abinster's memory by wearing his ring, and his tone while doing that actually feels like he truly lost someone he cared about. I almost like this casting choice of Sinestro so much that I honestly wouldn't mind if they reused him for the HBO Max Green Lantern series. That's how much he carries this movie. As someone who's recently grown to genuinely really like Green Lantern, watching this movie frustrated me. The entire first half of the movie felt like there was nothing happening at all. It literally took an hour for Hal Jordan to finally make his way to Oa and actually get his training. Even then, the highlight of that moment is Sinestro. Immediately after, they send us back to Earth in an awkward transition scene just to show us that Parallax is growing as a villain? This is a prime example of the number one obnoxious thing that Green Lantern does throughout the entirety of the film. Every time the movie begins to gain traction, or you think to yourself, oh, this is actually going somewhere, the movie slows back down because they have to balance telling the story of Parallax or make Hal go through something that's supposed to grow his character but doesn't. The poor writing of Green Lantern creates this poor pacing and because of these things, there's almost nothing to enjoy in this movie. It's not even so bad to the point where it's funny or you can laugh or make jokes while watching it. It's just straight up bad. This brings me to my large list of complaints about this movie. Firstly, let's get to the whole characterization of Hal himself. The beginning of the movie tries to sell you on this idea that Hal is everything like his father and all he tries to do is be like his father. It's to the point where the writers decided to throw in multiple lines of dialogue to emphasize this as if we needed it despite multiple different traumatic flashbacks that didn't do the job for us. What bothers me the most about this is that they didn't need to give us traumatic flashbacks. In all honesty, it does nothing to grow Hal in Green Lantern. It's just kind of there and his reward for going through that trauma is becoming the Green Lantern? In the comics, there's better flashbacks where Hal is sneaking out with his dad to go fly without his mother knowing and it's an actual lighthearted flashback. That's something that could have been included in this movie, or even how, as a kid, going to the same spot he'd go to and watch planes fly. Traumatic flashbacks in movies don't do anything if the movie's writing isn't good enough to help carry the effects of them. In this case, Green Lantern basically fails to do anything with them besides being like, well, you went through that, so you're clearly capable of being a Green Lantern. To add to all of this, it doesn't help that Ryan Reynolds is playing Hal. Now hear me out because I have a good reason for this, alright? 
Hal Jordan's entire character in Green Lantern is being a clueless dude who's only good at flying planes and chasing after Carol. He isn't a good superhero. He isn't a good Green Lantern. And just to remind you, he quits being the Green Lantern for a good 20 minutes of this movie. Honestly, throughout the entire movie, almost everyone hates Hal besides Carol. Even in the beginning of the movie, the sexual tension between Hal and Carol is there, and there's no buildup in the relationship. It's just kind of there, and we have to accept it, because they couldn't write a Tony Stark and Pepper Potts type of dynamic. Then you have to include the fact that Ryan Reynolds pretty much plays himself in every movie that he's in. However, there's a difference in Green Lantern. The difference is that he's trying so hard to not be Ryan Reynolds that it just comes off as awkward and makes Hal even more dislikable than he should be. While we're talking about Hal Jordan, I think it's time we talk about the elephant in the room. What the hell is the deal with this fully CGI suit? I know DC technically was ahead of their time due to the fact that Marvel eventually did begin to make CGI suits themselves. However, in this movie, you could have easily redeemed his suit if the mask wasn't fully CGI. I understand that they wanted to go ahead and follow the lore of Green Lantern, but in doing so, they kind of dropped the ball. I don't even necessarily hate the idea they had behind the suit itself. The mask just happens to ruin all of the work that they put into bringing the suit to life and making it be in tune with the lore. It's just pretty much laughable. I genuinely don't think that a realistic mask worn by Ryan Reynolds popping up with the rest of the CGI suit would have ruined anything at all. I mean, it wouldn't have redeemed the movie by much, let's all be honest here, but it would have at least given Green Lantern a secondary win behind the casting of Sinestro. Like I said, it's easy to compare this suit to other suits from movies like the Spider-Man Raimi trilogy, Captain America the First Avenger, or even Thor, but at the end of the day, a real mask could have gone a long way. Earlier, I mentioned that Hal quit being a Green Lantern for like 20 minutes, and this scene might be my biggest issue with the movie itself. The reason being is that it's only there for two reasons. The first reason is because it's there to try and add a comedic scene in the movie, which, I mean, the scene was nothing special. However, the second reason is because, for some reason, they wanted Carol to be the person that motivates Hal to not quit being a Green Lantern. Meanwhile, the entire movie, they're just bickering with each other until they finally kiss in the scene before Hal's like, oh shit, I gotta go be the Green Lantern now. It's so weird that they chose Carol to be the person that reignites Hal when he could have just talked to his best friend about it, or, I don't know, maybe send a Green Lantern or two to talk to Hal? Not only that, Hal in the beginning of this movie said it's his job to not be scared, yet later on in the movie, he's too scared to learn how to become a Green Lantern. What the hell was the point of that line if 40 minutes later, Hal goes entirely against it? On top of this, they show us how massive the Green Lantern Corp is, but suddenly, all of them are too busy to go talk to Hal. They couldn't have sent over Kilowog to have a real one-to-one -one talk with Hal since, I don't know, he was the one chosen to wear Avincer's ring, which seems sort of important in the beginning of the movie? You'd think they chase after Hal to see what's wrong with him. What was every single member of the Green Lantern Corps doing in this movie? Oh yeah, there's a villain in this movie, Parallax. You know what? I actually have a good question. Why is Parallax a gray space cloud with hints of yellow? I don't get it. In the comics, Parallax is this entire yellow entity. You mean to tell me that the budget for the color yellow went to that one scene where they show us fear in the beginning of the movie? You'd think that Parallax would be so yellow that the real complaint would be that he's almost too yellow, but no no no, let me tell you, he's built like Galactus in Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. It's even more annoying when you realize that all Parallax really does in this movie is feast on one host, and you know what Parallax does with that power? 
yeah, that's pretty much it, until the movie realizes that it has to somehow end. Don't even get me started on the fight with Hal Jordan, it's like a minute or two long and then the movie's like, yep, that's it, it's over, let's wrap it up with a stupid monologue about how Hal's biggest power is him being human. It's just so bad, and it's even more frustrating when you have comics that show how good a fight can be with Parallax in it. In one fight with Parallax, the Green Lantern Corps literally lose their senses as they fight him. Meanwhile, the fight in this movie is just like one massive, boring CGI fight that ends way too quickly, with almost no payoff, and it's frustrating cause looking back at it now, you really begin to think about what could have been. Green Lantern isn't one of those movies where people will look back at another 5 years and think that it was ahead of its time. Green Lantern might actually be one of the most painful movie experiences I've had on my channel thus far. It's so ridiculously boring, it doesn't do anything fun or interesting, and honestly, the movie was just a highlight reel for Sinestro, that's it. Green Lantern is going to probably go down as one of the worst superhero movies ever made, and you know what? I don't blame Ryan Reynolds for mocking it in Deadpool 2. Green Lantern deserved that, because my god, if anything, Green Lantern was just the beginning of poorly made DCU movies. Green Lantern simply will go down in history as DC's worst superhero movie ever made. Not even Suicide Squad takes that trophy, because there's at least some enjoyable things like Harley Quinn or Sucker for Pain. What do you want me to do? The song is fire, alright? You know what, it's a good thing that there isn't a superhero movie out there that does so many things wrong to the point where it actually makes Green Lantern somehow come off as fantastic. Say that again. It's fantastic. Why do I do this to myself? If you enjoyed this video and want to make me hate myself even further by watching Fantastic Four 2015, hit that like button. If you really enjoyed this video, hit that sub button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, write a comment down below. Don't forget to keep it real with peace, love, and positivity.